Hey, this is Philip from Safes and Motor Co. And on today's episode, we are going to do a deep dive into plumbing. Uh, we're going to go over everything that you will need to know uh, to plumb an entire car start to finish. Did you clean my pipes? No, I just checked your spray valve and tailpiece. We're going to go through uh, all of the different fittings from brake line fittings, oil fittings, uh, fuel. And, uh, and I know it can be quite daunting. Uh, there's a lot of different versions, there's different fittings, there's different styles, what to put where, how to put them together. So hopefully by the end of the video today, you'll have a comprehensive idea on how to plumb a car start to finish yourself. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Uh, many of you who are working on a project car, uh, you've probably noticed that improving your work goes hand in hand with improving your skills and knowledge. Learning will always reward you in the long run and that's why we're really happy to be partnering with Skillshare to sponsor the videos like today's. We have been using Skillshare for a long time and we couldn't be happier uh, to help share it with more people. If you aren't familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators like us. If you've got skills that you're looking at getting better at uh, or you want to learn a new subject, Skillshare is definitely for you. You can access all the classes you want. Uh, most of the lessons are less than 60 minutes, so it's really easy to fit uh, into your lifestyle and maybe a lot more easy than a kind of conventional school. If you enjoy our video production, uh, you probably have Skillshare to thank. Uh, we have learned lots and lots about uh, video production, photography, uh, and all those things that Skillshare uh, has really been an invaluable tool for us. There are also great resources for growing your business, uh, time management skills, if you're thinking about starting a business uh, kind of like we have. Uh, a course that we really enjoyed is called Make Creativity Your Career, and it's six exercises to create a successful side project by Andy J. Pizza. Andy has a passion and um, he's a really to the point communication style that uh, is really fun for following along uh, with his course. After you've done the video, I really encourage you to scroll down uh, to the description below. Uh, we've got a link there uh, to the Skillshare site. And for the first thousand people um, that sign up, you'll get a free trial to the premium membership. Uh, sign up, take a look around. Uh, you'll be really amazed at what cool stuff you can learn uh, right away from the comfort of your home. Like I said, we are a small business and we have got uh, a TIG welding torch right here and we've got lights flashing in the background. So hopefully it's not too distracting. Uh, we'll get into the fittings now um, and I will try to stay focused on the camera. So we're gonna start off this plumbing video with probably the most common plumbing you'll deal with uh, on a, a car build, specifically a mini, is that gonna be the uh, brake lines. So. With minis, they use, from factory, steel brake hard lines like this uh, and rubber soft lines. The steel hard lines are uh, 3 16 size. Uh, these are available at any auto parts store um, and you can get um, kits um, kind of like this one that have a fitting already attached to the end of them. Uh, you can also buy generic lengths of lines uh, and make them yourself. Uh, when making lines, um, we always prefer to use this stuff. This is called NICOP uh, brake hard line. And it's really nice because uh, you can get a really tight radius with it without it kinking. Uh, it also doesn't rust like the steel stuff. The steel stuff here has got a coating on top of it, but if that coating wears off, then it'll rust uh, underneath there. Um, and the other really nice thing with the NICOP is it is pretty soft, so you can actually just bend it by hand and like you can see right there I get a really nice 90 without any tools um, so whenever we are doing any brake lines this is always the stuff we go for it also adds kind of a cool look to it because it's got that kind of uh, coppery gold because it is nicop so it's nickel copper um, now when it comes to the actual um, ends of the brake lines, the way that they connect, um, there are two styles that are used um, on kind of every car. Um, there is the bubble flare, 
which looks like this, I can show you in detail. Uh, and then there is the double flare or inverted flare. Because I was inverted. British cars use a bubble flare on the end um, with a standard thread pitch. Uh, there will be all different sorts of combinations. Uh, Japanese cars will obviously have a, a metric thread. Um, a lot of American cars will have a standard thread but an inverted flare. Uh, but if we're talking about mini specific things, you're gonna be using a bubble flare. Uh, it's called a bubble flare because it kind of looks like a bubble, it rounds out. Um, I'll go to our brake flare tool um, shortly and show you how we make a bubble flare and the difference between a bubble and a double flare. Um, you will be using a double flare on a mini if you are connecting to hard lines. Uh, so on a mini you'll find pretty much there's two types of fittings that go on the hard lines. There's the male fitting like this and then the female fitting like this. Uh, the male is the most common. This will go into uh, T-junction pieces like this. Uh, it'll also go into uh, like the brake calipers. It'll go into the female side of the rubber hoses. Um, but sometimes there's a connection piece uh, between two hard lines. And for that, you use this, which is a female fitting. So what you do is you have like this, you have a bubble flare on one end and then on the opposite side, the one that's be connected, what we're going to do is we're going to create a double flare or inverted flare. Uh, that will allow the kind of um, inverted flare looks like this and the male flare to the bubble flare to go together. So we use this fitting here and this fitting here and they wind together and that's how you connect uh, two hard lines together. So let's take a quick break here and we'll go over to the bench and I'll show you uh, how we make our brake flares, the best tool you can buy, and also a cool trick uh, for making your brake lines look really professional and straight when you buy a generic roll of brake line. All right, so we're at the bench here. Um, before we make a brake line, I wanna show you this tool here. Uh, this is a really nice uh, tool for making your brake lines look really professional. Um, when you buy NICOP, it comes usually in a big roll um, and you can straighten it out on a bench or something and make it look, you know, halfway decent. Uh, but when you look underneath the car and there's arrow straight brake lines, uh, that really gives that OEM uh, finish and this tool will give it. This is made by Russell and it's adjustable tubing straightener. So if you take a piece of NICOP like this um, that is rounded and you just feed it through uh, just a couple times you'll see it comes out arrow straight. And, uh, and this is usually my first step when making a brake line. I'll roll out the big roll um, onto the table to get it kind of within the ballpark, um, cut it, and then run it through this to get a nice straight piece. You can still, after it's straightened, you can then add your bends, um, but this gives you a really good starting place um, to get really professional looking brake lines. So with that, let's now move on to the actual flaring of the ends. So when it comes to making your own brake flares at home or in your shop, uh, the brake flare tool you have uh, plays a big role in your success rate of uh, flares that um, will be leak free and work the first time. We have tried pretty much every tool you can buy and this one here is the one to get. This is made by Eastwood. Um, there's other companies that make a similar style uh, and it looks kind of like this. Um, you mount it in a bench vise. Yeah, so this tool here is the one that we go to. This makes perfect brake lines every single time. Uh, it's awesome. So the way it works is you've got a die here that you open up. You put your brake line in, close it up, lock this down, go to operation zero, pull the line, tighten this down, and then from there, uh, you go to whatever sitting you're on, uh, this is 3 16 operation one, pull the lever, done. That's as easy as it is to make a brake line. Uh, if you've ever done ones with the clamp style, uh, honestly, this is totally worth the money to get it. The reason I brought this out though is I want to show you the difference of um, the different styles of brake lines. So when I just did it right there, I'll show you, I made the brake line using the cone style here on the inside of the die, you'll see there's a cone style and then a 90 degree style. The cone style is what you use on um, American style 
brake fittings. And you'll see on the bottom of the bubble flare here, uh, and this is the bubble flare, uh, where it's got like the bubble shape, you'll see it's got a, a, a profile here, a cone shaped profile. If you are um, doing a British style, you will use the opposite side of this, the 90 degree end. And that is because the back of the thread in fitting here is flat. And if you were to put it onto here, it wouldn't have a nice mating surface. You need one with a flat edge. So you make sure you use the flat side when you're using the British style and the, the tapered side when you're using the American style fittings. This is a demonstration of a bubble flare. And like, as you can see, it's a bubble uh, shape. And that is done with the first operation of making the brake line. So when you are making a bubble flare, you just do the first operation and you leave it right there. That's a bubble flare. If you are making a double flare, first you make the bubble flare here, uh, and then you go on to operation two, uh, and that will create the, uh, the, the double flare or inverted flare. And it's called an inverted flare because first you have the straight brake line, and then you flare it out like this to make the bubble, and then you fold the edges in, and that makes the double, because it's doubled over, or inverted, because the pieces are inverted flare. So for that, we tighten this down again, I already did operation one to make the bubble. I go to operation two, pull the line, tighten it up, and there you go. We've got a uh, double flare, and I'll show you what that looks like. So that is a double flare, or inverted flare. So back to the bench here, before we move on to other subject, I want to talk a little bit about the fittings uh, that you'll use on the Classic Mini. Uh, this is the male fitting, and it is a standard thread pitch uh, which is pretty common for most uh, auto parts stores, like especially here in North America uh, for American cars. Uh, however, the British style is a little bit different than the kind of auto parts store version. This is what you're going to normally get uh, at an auto parts store. Uh, this uh, is the right thread pitch, so it will thread in to the British um, uh, fittings. However, you can see the fitting totally bottoms uh, before the line is able to compress because it is shorter. So the British fittings have a kind of uh, an end on the end here that's unthreaded. Uh, and another thing is that they're flat on the bottom side. So when you do make a, a bubble flare for a British bubble flare, um, uh, as I've shown on the bench, you're going to use the flat side on the back side uh, of the fitting, whereas with the kind of American style fittings, because it is uh, curved on the inside, uh, you'll use the rounded side. Um, so depending on the fitting that's being screwed into, these can be used, but I really recommend getting the correct fittings uh, from the proper supplier like mini spares. Um, and then this fitting here will work with all of your, uh, your factory mini fittings. Uh, there's also another fitting uh, that's used with brakes and that's called a banjo fitting. Um, on the front subframe, when the line comes down, uh, you have something like this. Um, you'll have a normal fitting, a male fitting that will thread into here with the hard line. And then in order to get the rubber hose, you'll have this. This is a banjo fitting. Banjo fittings work by compressing two flat, usually copper washers. So you put this on, you put a copper washer and you put this bolt through. And this bolt's kind of cool. It has a hole down the center of it and then also has a hole coming out the side here. So the fluid's allowed to run up the bolt and then out the side. And because there's a copper washer sealing between here, the top face and the bottom face, uh, the fluid is then allowed to come up and then out the side pieces. Um, when you're using a banjo fitting, it's really important. Make sure that all your mating surfaces are really clean. Uh, use new washers always. And then don't over tighten the washers. You want them to have a nice squeeze. You'll feel them kind of compress a little bit, but don't go too much further than that. Uh, that's all they need to make sure um, that it's sealed well. You'll, you'll get a feeling for it eventually when you do enough uh, uh, banjo fittings. These banjo fittings are also used uh, on uh, the brake rotors sometimes, uh, as well as the calipers. Um, you can uh, uh, get them in a... Uh, extended brake lines for the rear of the Mini. Um, so if you don't want to do a two-piece rear brake line, they have ones that have a banjo end on the wheel cylinder side and then they go up to the uh, to the line. Um, so they're used throughout the car. Um, and that's pretty much it for the type of OEM brake fittings that you'll use um, on a Mini. 
And now we're on to fuel lines. Now for a stock classic mini, uh, we're gonna be using just normal rubber fuel lines. Look something like this. Uh, usually with a mini, it'll be 5 16 diameter. That's referring to the inside diameter of the, uh, of the hose. Uh, there's also quarter inch on some of the earlier cars with the smaller carburetors. Uh, the difference for rubber lines uh, for kind of most automotive applications is there's two styles. There's going to be a low pressure style and a uh, high pressure style. So the low pressure style will be used for carbureted cars where they're only running about six to eight PSI uh, fuel pressure. And then there is the fuel injection style, which is you know up to 55, 60 PSI. Uh, you want to make sure that you're using the correct rubber hose for the application. If you have a fuel injected car, uh, you got to use fuel injected line because the other line is not rated for it. Uh, the other thing to think about is we always like to use um, ethanol proof rubber line because a lot of the fuel that you get nowadays has a lot of ethanol in it and ethanol eats rubber. So if you're using the old school style uh, rubber lines, uh, they'll work fine uh, initially, but then the ethanol will eat away uh, at the rubber uh, and eventually cause deterioration and a leak. So upgrade, always go for the, the good rubber line, um, especially if you're doing a rubber line that is used inside of a tank. Um, you want a submersible rubber line, like for instance, if you're going from the fuel pump uh, up to the sender, um, uh, you wanna use a line kind of like this uh, green line stuff here uh, that is submersible rated, otherwise it's gonna deteriorate in the tank. When it comes to connecting uh, this line to uh, the different um, hard line fittings, uh, you'll have, obviously this is the wrong size, but you'll have a hard line that'll just go in there. Usually it'll have a bit of a, a crimp on the end, so it'll have a bit of a, a bump uh, that allows for the line to pop over and have a good area for sealing. The factory um, uh, way of sealing a rubber line to a hose like this is just to use a normal gear clamp you'll find this at a normal hardware store, and, and these work okay. Um, I prefer though uh, not to use this style of gear clamp if you are gonna be connecting um, a rubber line to hard line. Instead, go with something like this. Uh, this is specifically for fuel injection hose, and the difference is you'll notice uh, the, the clamping style here um, goes straight across and it's got a completely smooth um, uh, inside, and what that does is when you tighten it, uh, it tightens without binding and also without cutting into the rubber hose. Uh, if you use this style here, when you tighten it up, quite often you'll see little bits of rubber come out the side um, and it will damage the hose as you install it. Um, another little tip is when you're using any of these gear clamps, uh, they usually have either a Phillips head or more often a flat head on the end here. Um, and using a flat head uh, on these is just uh, asking for the flathead to slip and scratch your paint. So if you are using something like this, we always use one of these. Uh, this is just like a screwdriver, but with a socket end. Uh, and it's so much easier to tighten these. It won't slip out. You can get a way more torque on it um, without the risk of damaging your paint. So that's a little tech tip. Grab a set of these if you are doing any of these. Um, the more OEM style of doing it and more modern, these didn't um, come on factory cars, but it is an improvement is to use uh, crimp fittings like this. Um, if you're doing a rubber line, let's say that has a, uh, a, like a banjo fitting on the end of it, um, and you won't need to be taking the rubber off of the, uh, the hard line anytime soon, um, I recommend using these. Uh, these are really nice. Um, these are used on a lot of modern cars. Uh, fuel injected cars um, and you put the the fitting over the end and you use a special pair of um, pliers like this um, and you go over the edge here and you crimp it down and uh, and it'll contract and uh, tighten on the on the rubber hose without damaging the inside um, and you'll get the perfect torque on it and it'll stay tight and you won't have the unsightly um, screw that can come loose and grab on stuff uh, this, for a permanent installation, is my preferred method uh, for rubber hoses. And all of the stuff that I'm referring to here with these uh, hose clamps, this also refers to water lines if you're doing anything um, with the coolant system. Coolant system is pretty simple. 
Uh, there isn't a lot of fittings. Usually it's just the hose is pressed over the end of like the radiator or the thermostat housing and you have a gear clamp. Again, uh, using a gear clamp uh, that has a smooth inside uh, is preferable. You can get a T-bar clamp that looks kind of like a really big version of this. Um, and that's great for uh, radiators um, or uh, anything to do with your coolant system. So with that, uh, let's move on to more custom fittings that you might encounter with a custom build. Now let's get into custom fittings. These are fittings that you'll be using in custom applications uh, when you're building a car. Um, and some of these you'll also find with OEMs. Uh, firstly, this will be the NPT fitting, uh, or if you're British, the BSPT fitting. Uh, NPT stands for National Pipe Tapered. Uh, and as the name suggests, it is a tapered thread. So uh, these threads uh, from the uh, start skinny and then get wider, kind of like a triangle shape. And the way that these work is when you screw them in, uh, because of the taper of the thread, uh, they get tighter and tighter the farther you go in. And that is what creates the seal. When you are using an NPT or a BSPT, British standard pipe thread, um, you want to use a thread sealant on them, otherwise they will not seal. Uh, this is an important difference from the other uh, pipe fit or other fittings that we're going to talk about later that don't require a seal. When NPT fittings are used uh, in a household uh, application, uh, like in your you know, sink or, or whatnot, you'll often use a pipe thread tape. Um, and, uh, and this is fine for uh, household applications. However, it's recommended do not use pipe thread tape uh, on an automotive application. Some of that tape can come off and even a little bit uh, into your fuel line can gum up your fuel pump, uh, your fuel injectors, uh, your fuel filter, and cause you a havoc in order to try to get that little piece of tape out. So whenever we are connecting anything uh, with an NPT or BSPT uh, fitting, we use a liquid thread sealant. Uh, this is the stuff that I like to use. It's a Permatex product. It's a uh, pneumatic hydraulic sealant. Uh, this stuff is amazing. It works so good. Um, if you're having a, uh, uh, a situation where your fitting um, just won't seal, uh, maybe on a banjo bolt or something that's not quite sealing right and you've tried having all the correct um, washers and MPT fittings and you've tightened it and you've tried all this stuff, this is the stuff to use. This stuff works super well. It's for high pressure applications. Pretty expensive for the bottle, but you use so little of it that it lasts a long time. Now, what you do is when you put them together, you only really need about two threads worth of sealant for it to seal. So you just put a little bit of dab on the uh, on the male side of the fitting, uh, screw it in, and make sure that the the sealant is on the inboard side, and you'll give it a good snug. It's it's more of a feeling based thing to how tight you want to go. Um, but you want just enough to make the seal and you don't need to go crazy with it. With an NPT fitting like this, uh, the threads will still poke out of the backside. So don't worry about getting all the threads in. Um, they come in different sizes and uh, the reason that uh, they have the threads all the way up is because of different lengths of the fitting um, to make it more of a universal application. NPT fittings are great because they are easy to make uh, for custom applications, you can buy NPT threads and if you need to, let's say, uh, thread a piece of aluminum, you can thread it with an NPT uh, thread and then you can just screw in an NPT fitting and you'll have a nice tight seal. You just got to make sure uh, that you are using, obviously, the correct size fittings uh, and make sure that you're using some sort of liquid thread sealant whenever you're using uh, NPT fittings or BSPT fittings. Um, Last thing I want to say about NPT fittings um, and BSPT fittings is that uh, they are not interchangeable. So we have minis, which are British cars, and they use British standard pipe thread. Um, sometimes it will feel like it fits, um, but they are um, a different thread pitch. Uh, it is a different angle to the, uh, to the taper, and you've got to make sure that you're using the correct uh, fitting, um, uh, corresponding fitting. Uh, NPT fittings also, um, you got to be careful of over tightening them because they just continue to get tighter and tighter. If you go too far, you can strip the threads out. Uh, so just use a little bit of uh, mechanical sympathy when you're putting these together uh, and you'll have uh, lots of good use out of MPT fittings. These are sometimes used on um, 
on, uh, into the block when you're using like an oil line uh, on a factory mini. Uh, so you will encounter these if you're doing some factory stuff. Uh, but all the rest of the things that we're going to talk about here are for custom applications. And the first one to talk about with that is AN fittings. AN fittings are some of the most common fittings you'll find in custom applications. Um, pretty much these are used universally. Uh, AN stands for Army and Navy, and they were originally invented in World War II as an agreement between the Army and Navy, uh, the U.S. Army and Navy. Five foot nine, I didn't know they stacked shit that high. To create a fitting uh, that is universal um, and can be reused multiple times uh, without the need of um, any sort of sealant. They are pretty cool fittings. Um, you can do so many things with these fittings. There's a whole bunch of different styles. Um, pretty much everything that will be like a custom application in terms of custom oil coolers and fuel pumps and, uh, and whatnot will all uh, be able to be used with AN fittings. AN fittings work because they have, um, uh, they have a taper on the inside, uh, like a cone shape. It's a 37 degree taper. Um, and then they have a, a threaded section on the outside that rotates separately from the taper on the inside. If you ever put um, like a, uh, um, a TV cable in, you'll understand that there's like the prong that goes in and then there's the threaded piece on the outside. This allows the prong to go in without having to rotate as it, as it goes on. Um, this is different from like a brake line fitting because on a brake line fitting when you are uh, tightening this, it's actually tightening and, and squeezing against the, uh, against the, uh, the brake fitting itself. Whereas this here, is just sandwiching the male and the female sides together. Um, and, and this means that they don't rotate as they uh, intersect with each other. And because of that, uh, they don't wear. Um, and they also don't require any um, sealant in between the two because they're perfectly matched 37 degree fittings that just go right against each other and are just held on the outside with this threaded piece. When you get them together, it's, it's easy to understand how they work. The thing to remember with these um, is that um, because they don't require any sealant and because um, they can be taken apart over and over again, they're really handy for use uh, on like race car applications or something where you might require to remove them multiple times. Um, and uh, this is really nice because you don't need to worry about sealant. You don't need to worry about uh, replacing crush washers. Um, and, uh, and they are really, really handy. Uh, AN fittings are sized uh, by a uh, number, numerical system. Um, they're called like AN dash whatever. Um, so dash three, dash four, dash five. The, the number refers to the 16th of an inch of the inside diameter of the hose that they use. Um, they do the inside diameter of the hose because wall thickness changes on different hose styles. So to keep it universal, um, they do the inside diameter. So uh, dash three AN is three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, and that's a pretty universal uh, way of measuring. Um, they go all the way from like dash two up to like dash 35. But for most uh, applications that we're gonna use, like in a mini application, uh, most, most custom cars, uh, here at the shop, we use mostly dash three and dash six. Dash three would be for like oil lines, uh, like high pressure oil lines, like going to a, a gauge. It'll also be used for brake and clutch lines. Uh, dash six will be used for uh, fuel lines. Now, if you have a really high horsepower car, you might go up to dash eight or even dash 10, but that's like thousand horsepower level. For anything that we're gonna be doing with uh, a mini application, dash six is the one to go with. Um, for anything to do with your fuel lines. Now, when you are buying uh, AN lines, they come in a whole bunch of different styles um, and different colors. Uh, the regular style is kind of the blue and red um, uh, ones. This is the typical, this is the way they originally were made. Uh, now they offer more sleek designs like these. I really prefer to use the, uh, the black ones. They just fit in with the classic car a little bit better than the kind of bright um, uh, blue and, uh, and red. Uh, they also have different styles of lines. Um, the kind of original style was like this, which is a stainless steel braided uh, line. Uh, they also have braided line 
that has um, a, a fabric coating. Um, this is the one that we like to use the most. Um, the fabric um, gives it abrasion resistance, but um, prevents it from scratching your paint. Uh, if you get a line like this, uh, touching up against uh, the paint of your car as it, the engine vibrates or whatnot, this can really wear away at the paint. Um, and also these little metal bits in the end when you're working on them just have a high likelihood of poking your fingers. So I really like to use uh, this style here. Uh, there's also kind of a uh, uh, vinyl covered style, kind of like this one here. Um, and then an old school style wrapped hose. Um, like this. This looks really good on a classic car. If you can get this style here, um, it looks kind of like the old school style um, uh, radiator hoses that you used to make on like pre-war Bentleys and whatnot. So this is really nice. When you are buying AN fittings, uh, there's also three major styles of attachment um, from the fitting to the hose. Um, for uh, pre-made fittings, you'll often find ones that are kind of like this style here. This is a crimp fitting, uh, so the fitting is put in and then a machine crimps this. This is not removable and generally most people who are doing DIY style fittings will not be using a crimp fitting because you need a special tool for doing the crimp fittings. We'll be using one of three styles. The first style is uh, called the PTFE style and that looks like this. It has three pieces, so when you're taking it apart, there is uh, there's a male part here, there's the female, and then there's a ferrule. And if you've done any work with um, some oil lines, they'll also sometimes use something like this. These are the, um, I would say, the, the strongest of the, uh, of the line styles, um, but they're also the most difficult to put together. A PTFE line will look like this, and the PTFE refers to the uh, plastic PTFE core in the middle of the line. Um, this is the most um, uh, resistant to ethanol, um, and this can be used in a wide variety of things from you know, brake fluids, um, all the way up to you know, fuel, diesel, nitrous. Um, and a PTFE line is divided into three sections. There's the plastic core, and then there is a stainless steel uh, uh, woven inner, and then there's a, uh, a rubber uh, coating on top of it. Um, sometimes with a, uh, with a stainless steel covering as well. Um, and the way that these are assembled is you have to separate the, uh, the, the stainless steel woven section and the PTFE center goes over top of this piece here. The ferrule then goes in between the PTFE and the woven cover and that goes on top there. And then finally, this end fitting goes over top and you tighten it all down. Uh, and that is how you make the connection between the fitting and the hose. Now, if you're doing uh, an AN fitting where you're gonna be using um, some strong chemicals through there, maybe like ethanol fuel, um, this is a good fitting to use, especially if you wanna do a fitting once uh, and just leave it in place. Um, that is a good style to go with. But like I said, they can be the most difficult to put together. Um, and there are two other options that are maybe more favorable for most uh, at-home DIY uh, enthusiasts, and that includes uh, these two styles here. This style here is called a push lock fitting. This style um, is very easy to assemble, and as the name suggests, you just push the fitting onto the hose. Uh, it's important to note that all of these fittings have different hoses and they are not compatible with each other. So if you are buying fittings, make sure that you are buying a fitting that corresponds with the hose that you're buying. For the push lock fitting, you'll see that it's just got, look how a barb on the end here. These are 37 degree uh, tapers on the end of the barb. And you put these together by putting this fitting here, uh, usually in a vise, uh, you can buy special vise clamps that are made of aluminum that will not mar the finish, because these are uh, aluminum, all these. Uh, if you use a steel one, the steel will dig in and, and eat the finish. So you want to use uh, a nice aluminum piece um, sandwiched between this, put it in the vise, put a little bit of a lubricant on here just to allow it to slide over, and then you push the fitting on. Uh, it can be pretty tough to push a fitting in. Usually I'll use a little bit of a heat with a heat gun and, and really impress it in, it should be fully seated. These push-long fittings don't require 
any sort of crimping uh, over top of it to seal. However, for peace of mind, I like to use one of these um, crimp style fittings like we talked about earlier. Put it over top and then crimp it down and then you know that you've got a guaranteed leak seal, um, uh, leak free uh, connection. Um, and that is how you put together uh, one of these push lock fittings. These work well, um, and like I said, it's a little bit easier to put together than the PTFE. Our favorite style, though, is uh, this style here. This is called a CPE fitting. Um, the CPE is the style of rubber hose. Um, CPE refers to the, uh, the makeup of the rubber that's in here. Uh, it's not a natural rubber, it's a synthetic rubber. Um, and these fittings are the easiest to put together. So with the CPE fittings, uh, you take them apart and you can see there's only two pieces like this. Um, the way you put these together is you take your line, your rubber line here, and usually what I'll do is I'll wrap um, the end where I want to cut uh, with a bit of masking tape, uh, cut it through either with a zip disc or a sharp blade, and then remove the masking tape. This stops the, uh, the th uh, braided section from becoming frayed on the ends. Take the female side and you put it over here and you turn it to the left uh, and it'll, you can see there's a kind of a coarse thread on the inside here. That will thread down over the top of the braided section here until it's completely bottomed. From there, you take the male side, put a little bit of uh, lubricant on the threads here. And then with this one attached on the inside here, you simply screw this side down into the fitting. I like to hold uh, this side here uh, in the bench uh, vise, um, again with the proper aluminum holder. And then this style here, I, I tighten uh, with an aluminum wrench. You can buy adjustable AN wrenches. You can also buy uh, sets of AN wrenches. And the reason we use uh, aluminum AN wrenches is because normal steel wrench uh, will mar the surface again. So make sure that you're using the uh, correct wrench uh, to give that nice OEM finish. Once this is all the way threaded down, um, you just tighten it up and that is good to go. Uh, you don't need to use any sort of sealant uh, when you're putting together AN fittings. However, it is recommended to use some sort of lubricant when you're putting the threads together. Aluminum has a tendency to gall when you're putting it together if you do it uh, dry. So both on the inside fittings here, uh, the inside threads, I like to put a little bit of uh, like a silicone um, base lubricant. Uh, similar to the style you'd put on maybe uh, sliding pins of a brake caliper. Um, I also put a little bit on the threads, the male side of the threads, uh, on, an, on an AN fitting. Um, this just helps them go together uh, nicely, and if you do need to remove them, uh, it gives a little bit of lubricant so that there isn't a chance of uh, stripping or galling the threads. Uh, but you don't need any on the actual mating surface of the 37 degree taper. Uh, that's one of the big benefits of using AN fittings. So that's it for the three different styles of AN fittings. Uh, let's get on now to the last fitting, which will be the ORB style fitting. So the last fitting we're gonna talk about is ORB fittings. This stands for O-ring boss fittings. On top like a boss. These are often used alongside AN fittings. Uh, they are different from AN fittings um, because they have a straight uh, taper to the threads, um, but there is no 37 degree mating surface. Instead, the sealant um, is done with an O-ring, as the name states. So you can see on this fitting here, uh, it's an AN on this side and an ORB on this side, and you can see the difference. Um, how you put these together is you have the O-ring that comes with them. You put the O-ring over top of the, uh, of the fitting here, and then what you do is in the corresponding female side of this, you thread it all the way down and it will have a little bit of a chamfer that will take up the space where the O-ring goes. And these are machined uh, as matching sets. So the idea is that you thread an ORB fitting all the way until it's fully bottomed because the bottoming of this face here uh, will create a perfect seal on the O-ring. Um, the reason that these are really nice is because it's impossible uh, to over torque them. Uh, you have to make sure though that you're using an ORB fitting uh, that is a matched set. They come in different lengths depending on, the, on the, the male and female side of the fitting and if you get them mixed up they will not have the correct um, 
uh, clamping force and then therefore the seal will not work. Uh, the other thing is that with these, the rubber seal, um, usually it's, it's not natural rubber, it's like a synthetic material on the O-ring. Um, these O-rings are kind of single use. You can sometimes use them more than once, but it's always recommended to change them out. So if you are doing a, uh, a fitting that requires um, uh, being removed you know, multiple times, I would suggest instead to go with an AN fitting. The ORB fittings are really nice though because they're super easy to assemble. You just put on uh, the, uh, the O-ring here, thread it all the way until it completely bottoms, lock it down, and it's good to go. Uh, like the AN fittings, the ORB fittings do not require any sealant. Like I said, the rubber O-ring is, uh, is the sealing surface. However, I also like to use a little bit of lubricant on the threads just to make sure, again, because it is aluminum to aluminum, uh, there's no galling. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it for ORB fittings. They come in a variety of different sizes, much like the AN, and you'll often see these used alongside uh, AN fittings, like this fitting, for instance, uh, threads in one side into a fuel filter, and then there is an AN fitting on the outside, um, which is a nice addition because that way, if you need to remove it, you remove from the AN side, uh, and you leave the ORB side attached. So with those, different fittings uh, that should be everything you need to know to get into uh, any sort of custom application that you're going to be doing um, also with all the OEM fittings uh, it's a lot to take in uh, but at least now you'll have a comprehensive idea on all the different fittings and all the different plumbing uh, that you may go into when you're doing a custom job or custom build like uh, some of the ones that we do we use all of these fittings in different applications uh, and it's uh, really handy to have a good stock of all of them um, they all have their benefits and their and their drawbacks and uh, i hope that helped you out uh, if you like this video like and subscribe below uh, check out all of our videos we've got videos we're putting out weekly and uh, check out our website we've got uh, steve's and motor co t-shirts we've got hoodies we've got swag and we also sell a variety of parts uh, for classic minis so make sure to check those out and we'll see you on the next video